and, and, and the electric grid, right? So let me ask you a question. You have a natural gas, so some of you will be valuing natural gas fired power plants. How would you value a natural gas fired power plant? So we're switching now to going over your project because this is going to be a real option. How would you value your power plant? So uh, what we could say, there's, there's some assumptions here. If you actually own a power plant, you bid in to, to supply a certain amount to the grid. So, and I won't know this necessarily sometimes until the day ahead, but I bid in um, to supply electricity to the grid into an auction at some price. I may get it, I may not. But let's just say we're going to sell, we're, we sell, uh, it's a thousand, uh, nah, I don't want to make that, 500 megawatt plant. So let's just say our power plant is 500 megawatt. Right? And we, we're just going to sell it at whatever the spot price is. So we have to estimate the spot price. So in other words, our, let's say our sales on any given day are going to be um, uh, 500 megawatts times uh, the average you know, uh, dollar price per megawatt. So, um, 500, so let's just say, I don't know, let's say it's $40 per megawatt hour. Right? So $40 per megawatt hour times the number of hours in a day. So 24. In your project, we'll actually have on-peak and off-peak hours. So you'll have a price for on-peak and a price for off-peak, right? Electricity is cheaper at night. It's more now. So we'll have different prices. But I'll just say it's average $40 throughout the day, which is sort of high. Um, good. So this is going to be our sales, right, on any given day. And then we have our costs. What's, what are our costs? Well, uh, uh, sort of, I forget that the, the, uh, sometimes people are new. Uh, uh, cost is just going to be the, you know, we have to buy natural gas for this, right? So it's going to be the, uh, the amount of uh, natural gas that we have to, to um, uh, that, that we're going to need to use to create a megawatt of electricity. Uh, so um, it's going to be, what is our, our cost of natural gas uh, times our heat rate, which is, uh, um, what uh, the, the, the heat rate is what's going to translate the price per natural gas into the price of electricity. Uh, times our 500 times our 24, right? So 500 times 24. So we have sales minus cost, and then we get some sort of, you know, gross profit, right? So this is, or, you know, this is just um, a very simple, without including other fees and so forth, we can just take the difference between these two, and that's our profit. Ignoring a lot of other things, maintenance costs and so forth, which which will be in there, but they're not important for sort of for what we want to understand. So if we do this for every day, right, and we say this is day one, day two, day three, and so forth, then we can get our cash flow per day. We discount our cash, you know, cash flow that we we expect to. These are you know expectations, expected price per megawatt. I never put it what the natural gas price is, but this will be like two dollars per MMBTU. The heat rate will be about eight. So you know, two times eight. Uh, times 50 times 24. So um, this is going to be, you know, this is our expected amount of revenue. That's our expected cost. We get our expected cash flow. Um, I really should rename this cash flow. We get our sort of expected cash flow on every given day, expected cash flow at time two, expected cash flow at time three, and so forth. We discount them back to, um, to time zero. And we get the value of our plan. Does that make sense? We say this is the cash flow that the plant will generate every day. Take the present value of all of them, that's the value of our power plant. What does that not include, however? Let me ask you a question. If on some day, let's say our expected cash flow was negative, what would you do? So it's on some given day here, expected cash flow uh, negative $100,000. Would you run the plan? So in other words, when we're talking about these expected cash flows, these are, these are expected values in some sort of distribution, right? So in other words, we can look at here and say, okay, well, this is, um, you know, this is, this is money. Uh, these are, these are, uh, let me say, uh, this is, you know, this is our cash flow, right? Uh, and this is, this is going to be the probability density function. So this is, you know, 
a prob you know, we know like a normal density function, and these are cash flows. So um, our expected cash flows you know, have some wide distribution. And you know, maybe this right here is zero. So in the case where it's zero, less than zero, what would we do? Would we run our plan? Or would we shut it down and wait till the next day? Depends on what costs are incurred to shut it down and then start back up again. Absolutely correct. So yes, we have to include ramp costs. We have to include um, because if we shut it down, you know, that there's a cost in incurring to shut it down, and then if we're going to bring a plant back up, there's there's some ramp costs. Absolutely true. Ignore that. Say say there are no other costs but this. Would we shut Would we shut down our plant? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So the idea here is um, this. When we're taking this expected cash flow, of course, the variability in this um, in our density function here is going to be incorporated in the discount. Right? So what we really should do is we really shouldn't include this case down here where it's less than zero because we'd shut down our plant and we wouldn't incur it. Does that make sense? So the cash flows of our plant aren't simply sales minus cost. The cash flows are going to be something like this. Um, you know, uh, our expected cash flow right, is actually going to be the maximum and I'm going to drop the 500 in the hour. So this is the expected cash flow uh, per megawatt per hour. Does that make sense? So just dropping the 500 because it's not important. Um, is going to be uh, the price of electricity minus uh, the heat rate times the price of natural gas. If it's positive, but if it's negative, we shut down the plant and earn what? We shut down the plant and earn zero. So in other words, our power plant is, what, it, what does this look like? Yeah, when, when we had stock up here, did you see a similar equation when I had stock? They said the intrinsic value on a call option is this. Similar to that? Yeah, this is an option. So in other words, in a very real sense, not a theoretical sense, not a textbook sense, in a very real sense, a power plant is nothing other than a series of call options. If, if, if this option, um, we would term this as in the money. If there's a positive intrinsic value, meaning it's in the money, I run the plant and earn the intrinsic value. If it has uh, an intrinsic value of zero, meaning if I ran the plant, I would lose money, then I shut down the plant. So on any given day, you can think of run the plant, don't run the plant, run the plant, don't run the plant. In reality, just as pointed out, there are constraints, meaning if I, if I ramp it up, there, you know, I might want to keep it running for a certain amount of time at a loss. If, like if it's just going to lose for a day, uh, you know, I may want to, you know. So there are constraints like that. But those are just added constraints to this basic fundamental uh, view of an option, of a power plant as, uh, as a series of options. Right? So in other words, what we realize, you know, going in capital budgeting after, uh, you can think of, you know, 1980s and so forth, is that we need to get rid of this portion of the distribution. Or, or a business managers would get rid of that portion of the distribution. So what we're really dealing here with is an option. So we need to value what we're, uh, we need to value the power plant with options methodology. Does that make sense? So when you value this power plant, you'll first do it by discounted cash flow. And then you'll, you'll value the power plant considering that it is an option. And from our conversation so far, which one should be worth more money? The option of the power plant or, or discounted cash flow? Yeah, so in other words, once we get rid of this port, which we're going to do with the option, the option value is higher. So what we realize is, you know, um, the, the, and, and this is consistent with what we've seen in the market. You know, going back, we say business, uh, businesses are willing to pay more than discounted cash flow will, will, um, will uh, dictate. And again, this is because you know, once you start looking at it, an option and, and realizing all the options inherent in this business, you can, um, the, it, the project is worth more. Sense. So, uh, yes, so we will value a power plant as an option, just this option exactly here. Now, once we start valuing it as an option, we have to take into account such things as the volatility, which are going to be how wide that distribution is. So, the option methodology is a little bit more intricate, but it's accurate. So, uh, what we'll do is value a power plant like this. So, one thing I want to get across is in your text, two very simple 
examples of real options, but they're 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 really uh, you know if there's any capital budgeting question I can look at it and, and look and find options in it, or you know there there are likely to be. In fact, the very famous paper Black Scholes '73, which laid out option pricing methodology, actually used it to value the equity in a company. They didn't use it to value stock options. In other words, can you think of the equity in the company as an option? Is there any way you can think of the equity in a company as an option? This goes back to our, can stock prices be negative? Can stock prices be negative? Why not? With limited liability, right? So the stock prices cannot be, because you have limited, you're not liable for company debts. So when we look at the equity in a company, what does that look like? Just to sort of, Bring the idea of options are everywhere. Even equity company, companies are options. Um, let's say you know uh, the equity is worth. In, a, in this is market value of equity. Market value of equity. Market value of liabilities. So uh, the equity is worth 500. Liabilities are worth 400. So um, uh, well, shoot, no, I, I, sorry. I need to say assets. Market value of assets. Assets are 500. So equity. If we if we sell off our assets. Uh, and pay our liabilities, we're left with 100, right? Equity is 100. Market value of assets, 200. Market value, or let's just say, you know, a case goes against us, right? So let's keep assets at 500. Liability goes up to 700. What's the market value of our equity worth? Negative 200? No, zero. Is that an option? So in other words, we can say the equity that comes in a company is just the maximum of assets minus liabilities from zero. So equity is actually an option. It's an option on the company's assets. So you can value um, uh, company's equity is an option on its assets, where the strike price is the present value of the, uh, is the is the liabilities. What is the strike price? It's the, the the price at which I have the right to buy it. So when I say um, you you pay me money for the right to buy Tesla at 200. The strike price is 200. That's the right at which you can buy it. So in other words, you know, here the strike price would be the liability, 700. Does that make sense? Last, but you know, and I, I, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll end it with this. You can also do we know what limit orders are? You can submit a, a limit order to a market where it says I will buy this stock, but only. Uh, for this price or below. That's actually you're selling an option to the market. So you can actually look at types of orders in markets and those are options. So if I say I'll buy at um, 35 or below, I'm selling this is too common. I'm selling a put option to the market. Right? Because somebody can turn around and sell it at that price. But anyway, there's a lot of options. Uh, so um, so yes. So one the the way to way we really should look at capital budgeting is discounted cash flow is fine, but also include any sort of option there. Whether it's just the, the whole, you know, power plant is an option, or the option to to uh, uh, expand, the option to to stop your project, and so forth. Is that okay? All right, so I think the, the the thing now is we'll go through examples. Uh, we'll go through examples of you know however much you want to do in capital budgeting and um, and some of the option questions. And we have to go over the end of chapter questions, right? Chapter seven too. Or yeah, chapter seven. All right, so I'll shut this thing off because, um, yeah.